Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we're gonna talk about general purpose or all purpose rods versus technique specific rods. All right guys, so before we jump into today's video, I gotta thank the folks at NRS for making this video, actually, and this Performance Matters series possible. So if you're looking for anything water sports related, the folks at NRS make the best stuff in the game from my favorite PFD to boots, to dry gear, to jackets, to dry bags. Honestly, go check out their website and you will find everything you need for getting out there and catching your next adventure. So again, thank you to the folks at NRS. Now let's talk about general purpose versus technique specific garage. And you know what guys, in a lot of videos, you've got this title and you've got this description and then the content creator makes you wait until the end of the video for the payoff. So I'm gonna give you the juice up front on technique specific rods versus all purpose rods. If you can afford a technique specific rod and you can afford to add them to your arsenal, they are 100% worth every penny. Now, I'm gonna make the best analogy that I can make. Technique specific rods, when it comes to fishing, are like golf clubs when it comes to golf. Or the difference between a tennis racket and a badminton racket and a racquetball paddle. Yes, you could probably play any of those sports that require a racket with any racket, but it wouldn't be that great. And you could probably play an entire game of golf with like a seven iron or a driver, but you probably wouldn't be that great at the parts of the game that that golf club or that racket weren't designed specifically for. And the same thing holds true when it comes to fishing. So again, instead of making you wait to the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you right now in hopes that you watch the whole video, but if you're going to buy one rod for bass fishing and you're going to go with the general purpose rod that will cover all applications, I'll just tell you up front, it's a seven foot, medium heavy, moderate fast action. If it's moderate fast, you can still use it for things that you need a fast action for, but you can still also use it for things that need a little bit more moderate action. It's not going to be the best crankbait rod, but it'll work. It's not going to be the best jig and worm rod, but it'll work. It's gonna work really well for spinner baits and for chatter baits because that's kind of the, the idea behind that rod. So if you're looking for a general purpose rod, then 100%, seven foot, medium heavy, moderate fast. And if you're talking about real recommendations, split in the middle, seven one, seven two, seven four to one gear ratio, not on the low end, not on the high end. But let's talk about getting into more technique specific rods and why they benefit you. I see people lose fish all the time when they're fishing jigs because they're fishing too soft of a rod. So when they set the hook, they don't get a good hook set. That fish comes up or runs them into a brush pile and they lose them. I also see them fishing a moderate action rod when they set the hook and then that fish can bury itself down in that treetop and hang it up. And so they did everything right except choosing the rod. They got the right lure at the right time and put, put it in the right place, got the right hook set, but didn't have the power to turn that fish and get it away from that cover. Uh, crankbait rods should have more of a parabolic bend to them. And the reason for that is when you set the hook with a treble hook lure, a lot of times the lure's on the outside of their mouth. So when they jump or they run at you and they shake their head, they're using the water pressure or when they jump, uh, they're using the weight of the rock, the lure to help throw it. And a lot of times when you set the hook or if they hit that bait going away from you, they tear a little bit bigger hole. Crankbait hooks are generally pretty sharp. And so when they shake their head, if that rod is allowed to straighten out, the weight of that lure or the water load on that line helps them throw the lure. So if you're using too fast of an action or too stiff of a rod when it comes to crankbaits, you're gonna lose more fish. Time and time again, I've heard anglers tell me, man, I hooked up this fish, I hooked up that fish. I ask them, what were you throwing? And they tell me what lure they were throwing. Then I say, what type of rod were you using? And 90% of the time, I could tell you that they were using the wrong rod before they even tell me, but almost always they're using too fast of an action and too stiff of a rod for a crankbait. Conversely, when, fish, when, when anglers are losing fish on jigs or worms or Texas rig plastics, they're probably using too soft of a rod. So 
I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, a technique specific rod will allow you to make a better, more accurate presentation. It will also help you set the hook better and it will give you the feel that you need. If you hang up a lot fishing a jig on the bottom because you have a soft rod, what's happening is, is you're bumping that jig along. When it gets next to a tree limb, you pull that rod bends and when it hops over that tree limb, it slingshots into the next one, wraps up and hangs you up. And that's why you hang up more. That's why a jig rod should be a little stiffer. You bump it, you feel it. That tip bends a little bit. You pull it up over that rock and it falls right back down and it stays in the strike zone. So jig and worm rods should be a little faster a little stiffer to get them away from cover to have more feel with bottom contact by and large if you're gonna have bottom contact and you're gonna be feeling the lure moving and you're gonna fish it both under tension and on slack line the rod should be faster extra fast and if you're gonna fish that loaded lure like a crankbait a topwater that low that lure that you're fishing but it's preloaded and you're in open water or you're bouncing it off of stuff you should be fishing more of a moderate or parabolic action, something that's a little bit softer. And the reason that I say that is also for the presentation. Fishing a square bill, for example, if the rod is too stiff, when that square bill runs into something, that rod tip bends, it doesn't have a lot of give, so it flips that lure into the log or the, the treetop or the rock and hangs it up. Whereas if you've got that parabolic bend, that lure runs and it hits something, it backs up because the rod gives and then it keeps on going. So the presentation's better, the hook set's better, and the fight is better. So if you're going to fish a technique-specific rod, you're going to have more success. You're going to get more hook sets. You're going to have better feel for the presentation that you're, uh, that you're using. And after you do everything right and you set the hook and you get them, you're going to have a better chance of landing that fish. So technique-specific rods are 100% better for the presentation, better for the hook set, and better for the fight. So they're definitely worth the money. If you're going to go with an all-purpose rod, I say split the difference on everything, and you're going to have to compensate on some techniques and some presentations. But if you're going to buy technique-specific rods and you only have one buy the one that's the technique that you use the most. I think that's common sense, but it's not something that people think about. All right, guys, so there you have it. If you have it within your budget or within your means to pick up a technique-specific rod, they are worth every penny. If you have to go with a general-purpose rod, go with that rod in that seven-foot, medium-heavy, uh, moderate-fast, 7-1 to 7-4 gear ratio. It's going to split the difference in pretty much everything that you need to do. You can change the action and you can change the hook set of certain rods by, for example, if the rod's a little softer and you want more hook set power, go to braid. You're going to have less stretch. Uh, go to a fluorocarbon leader. Don't fish mono. Um, there's some adjustments that you can make. But the question that we pose in this video is, are technique-specific rods worth it? I think that wholeheartedly, if I'm fishing, I would rather be fishing with a putter when it's time to putt, a driver when it's time to drive, and a iron when it's time to, well, I don't know enough about golf to know what you really do with irons, but you, get, you guys get the point. So anyway, don't play soccer with a stick. Don't kick a football into a net, and uh, I think you'll have more success. Guys, I hope you liked this video. Smash that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. And be sure to turn on those notifications so you'll know each and every time I drop some more knowledge on you like this. And uh, I'm going to go see if I can't catch a fish now. Love y'all. See you in the next video.